On the video, Unseen Operation, I got an interesting comment from Socialist Distancing, which you can read there. He seemed pretty intrigued, or she, seemed pretty intrigued by the, by the curved switch on that spur. And you can see that curved switch right here. Now, I have to make a correction to what I said. I said that that switch had been removed about three years ago. That's not the switch that was removed. It was the one right beneath it, which is this one here. That one is the one that was removed about three years ago. But the reason I'm bringing this comment to mind is because if you like that switch on a curve, here's an even better one for you. This switch is at Newberry, Pennsylvania, the old Reading Railroad Yard there, which today is owned by the Cedar Cog Joint Rail Authority and is operated by the Lycoming Valley Railroad. If you look in the other direction, a few hundred feet down, that is Newberry Yard. I mean, you really can't see Newberry Yard, but that beige building right there at the end of the tracks there with the white door to the left, that's the shop. That's the uh, Lycoming Valley Railroad shop. But like I said, this is Newberry, Pennsylvania, and this is the Lycoming Valley Railroad. And for you socialist distancing, I thought you'd really find this particular junction intriguing if you, if you like the one in Scranton. The next comment is from Roberta Williamson, who I believe is in northern Michigan. But anyway, as you can read for yourself, she had a pretty, shall we say, enlightening experience at a grade crossing with a particular train. And she asked me, have I ever dealt with anything like that, you know, like a sticky train? And the answer is, yes, I have. We have them here. Well, not those kinds of trains, but we have the Mingo Junction trash trains that run between New York City and North Jersey and Mingo Junction, Ohio. I caught several of those trains, one in Allentown and one in Tyrone. And trust me, when that train goes by you, you know it. I can tell you from unpleasant experience, the smell of tons and tons and tons of rotting garbage going by you in the hot July sun is indeed an experience that will put hair on your chest. Last but certainly not least is from retired Southern Pacific crewman David Barnett who resides in the great state of Texas which I'm proud to say I did too for many years where I got to know the Southern Pacific quite well. David remarked about a Grand Trunk Western boxcar that was painted boxcar red and only had the reporting mark and he wanted to know if in fact that was a Grand Trunk Western car and as you can read for yourself the answer is yes it is a Grand Trunk Western car Canadian National who now owns Grand Trunk Western they've owned it for a while I'm not sure how long but it's been a while I mean like for since last century which I'm sure you know that Dave but the point being is yes that is a Grand Trunk Western car but these days they don't paint them the blue Good Track Railroad logo anymore. They just paint them boxcar red. Like pretty much all boxcars for the most part. Most boxcars. I won't say all. Obviously not all. But most boxcars. The Grand Trunk Westerns are some of my favorites. Uh, some of my old school favorites. And you don't see many of them around anymore. Not not the blue ones anyway. I mean you see plenty of, like, of what you see here. You know the boxcar reds. But uh, seeing the old Good Track Railroad logo on the boxcars painted blue, that's very, very hard to come by in this day and age. I said last but not least, well, I misled you. There's one more, and this is from that same video. And I got a couple of comments about how much lumber that there was on that train, and that's actually pretty common for this particular train. This is the train 11Z. Now, locals, most locals, or at least a lot of locals will know this, but for those of you who don't know this, 11Z is formerly the 11R. The only thing that changed was the train symbol. The 11R, in the beginning, was running from, actually was running from North Carolina, Linwood Yard, Spencer Yard, and was running up to Binghamton and, in the, in, and into East Deerfield. And this is where, you know, NS are constantly changing names. But bottom line is it's the former 11R. And it went from 11R to 11Z. The 11R still runs from East Deerfield to Binghamton. And then from Binghamton down to now it's Knoxville, Tennessee, is the 11Z. But here's where it gets interesting. 
the 11Z today encompasses elements of the old 36T to Allentown, but also the 30T to Harrisburg. There used to be a train. It was a, it, it was a Canadian national train, and I've talked about it in other videos in the past. But 30T was a Montreal, Quebec train to Harrisburg. It was a Canadian national train. It used to run with the, it used to run almost exclusively with Canadian national power. And it also ran with mostly Canadian national rolling stock. And they were pretty they were pretty easy to spot because everything was Canadian national. Well that got folded into 11 r in January of 2016. And as I mentioned before, 11 r became the 11 Z. And the reason that I'm bringing that up is because, if you didn't know, Canadian National is the biggest hauler of lumber. Well, railroad, Class 1 railroad, Canadian National hauls the most lumber of any Class 1 railroad, of any railroad, period. Canadian National is the biggest lumber hauler of any railroad in North America. Uh, the Canadian Pacific is the biggest grain hauler of any railroad in North America. The BNSF is the biggest container hauler of any railroad in the in North America and Norfolk Southern used to be the biggest coal hauler until coal kind of went on the wane so I don't know if that's still if, if that's still an accurate statement or not I don't believe it is I believe now BNSF might be the biggest coal hauler but at one point NS was the biggest coal hauler in North America getting back to the 30T the 30T used to run as a separate train and like I said, it got folded into the 11Z. The 31T, which was the northbound counterpart, is now folded into 12Z. One last side note about the 30T and 31T trains, and I've talked about this in past videos, but before they became Montreal to Harrisburg trains and back, they were Allentown to Buffalo trains that ran over the mountain, over Penobscot Mountain here in northeastern Pennsylvania. And they were kind of the precursors to the 37Ts. In fact, that's they were they they were the precursors to the 37. Well, they were kind of like the precursors to the 37Ts and 36Ts that were abolished in 2020.